Welcome back. Coming up, we're going to take a look at the November Gentleman Junkie Knife Giveaway Knife. We're going to take a look at some micarta that I've dyed. And then new knives to the collection. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Back to the show. My favorite comment from this past week was from Craig Vincent. Craig is a uh, regular contributor to um, Thursday Night Knives. He says, Bob, I started collecting knives 13 months ago. I was about three months into it when I got my first cold steel, and I never looked back. I'm up to 50-plus cold steels, and among them are six Voyagers, three large, three XLs. I guess I'm just a fast learner, LOL. I like that, fast learner. That's a, another great justification, you know, right here at the Knife Junkie Podcast. We look for different ways to justify our habits, or I should say our hobbies uh and uh collecting knives being being chief among them uh we got to come up with good justifications from now and again fast learner is a good thing you know you 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 never want to stop learning and how are you going to do that by acquiring more knives so i think cold steel is a good way to go uh especially considering um you get a lot of bang for your buck and if you have any interest in historical knives and modern representations thereof they are the way to go all right. That being said, uh, thanks for commenting. Uh, one and all, it's greatly appreciated. And of course, thanks for watching. Uh, let us get to now a pocket check. In my front right pocket today, I had the Auto RSK Mark One from Doug Ritter and Hogue Knives. This thing is awesome. I'm gonna do this all with my left hand. Very strong spring. It has, it really pops out with authority, slams out, and yet somehow it's easy to one-handed close. Uh, maybe not as much with the left hand here, but see, I still managed. Uh, so you have everything you get from the RSK Mark I. This is the full size, um, but in an auto package. One thing I did notice is that they have tempered the texture on that uh, Contour G10, which is really nice, has that radial sunburst pattern coming out from the pivot. Um, on my uh, first RSK, full size, and then my mini RSK, which I still have, uh, it's really aggressive, but here they've knocked it down a bit, and that'll be kinder on the pants pockets. Uh, speaking of the pants pockets, they have changed I think the gauge of the metal that they use for their spring clip, it feels slightly stouter, or maybe it's because there's coating on there. I can't tell, but uh, I, in the past, I have gotten um, aftermarket uh, Benchmade clips to put on my Hogue knives. Um, but this one, I'm just gonna leave. I'm pretty happy with that. It seems pretty stout. Um, that's the only complaint I ever have with any Hogue knives. Uh, they are so well done. This one has great action. And then a secondary lock, which since it's there, I've been using. Um, but uh, other than that, you know, I, I wouldn't miss it if it weren't there. But since the button sits pretty proud, I figure why not? Oh, and last on the list of awesomeness for this is it is of MagnaCut 63 to 64 Rockwell. So Magna Cut Steel, the it steel at the at the best um, Rockwell hardness for that steel. So this is a great knife. I've been carrying it quite a bit. When I had my full size, I carried it a bit, and then um, it ended up. Uh, well, I gave it away uh, to to a friend in need, um, but I didn't miss it as much as I would have the small one. But now the full size with the auto just kind of sends it over the cool, the coolness wall for me. And uh, I'm all about this knife. I've been carrying it quite a bit. Uh, okay, second up in my pocket today, I had the C. Reisner Cutlery Ohio River Jack. Such a great, great knife. This one is in Warncliffe and uh, riding in a Kevin Duty slip, Duty Daggers on, uh, on YouTube. Uh, he was just on, we just had him on episode number what did i have him on he was on oh 455 
go check it out. So with any of these shows that I mentioned, all you got to do is go to the number. Uh, Kevin Duty was uh, theknifejunkie.com slash 455. He makes these beautiful leather slips, and he has a lot of great uh, videos about knives like this. This one is a design from Austin Jackson, proprietor of traditionalpocketknives.com and C. Reisner Cutlery a company started by his grandfather who loved traditional knives and was a buyer, trader, seller, uh, knife community um, stalwart uh, in the traditional world. And uh, so Austin um, started or, or continued the company in his name. And under that shingle has been designing knives and having them made. This one made by QSP. Uh, I'm not so confident about closing them one-handed. They, they do have pretty stout springs, but really, really great action and a wonderful cutter. This is a full flat ground uh, M390 Warncliffe. Um, I think it looks really nice with the slip color-wise. I think it's a great match. And... Uh, yeah, that's a that's a pretty robust knife if you if you have your slip joints for any sort of hard work this or the champlain barlow or any qsp also um slip joint they just seem very very stout and sturdy all right uh next up on my belt today i had the mr1 from t kell knives uh t tim kell is an awesome guy i had a great time uh, sort of haunting his booth at Blade Show, and he's been on the show a couple of times. Well, he was on episode uh, 403, and then he's been on uh, Thursday Night Knives as well. Uh, this is his Nighthawk uh, knife, except sharpened on the top edge. Uh, a special job for a Marine Raider unit, Marine Raider 1, I guess, out of California, Southern California. Uh, this is a purpose-driven knife. Yes, this is for uh, close combat. Um, maybe you're uh, clearing a house or clearing rooms and such, and someone jumps on you. Uh, th these are the stories I've heard. Of course, this is not uh, my own experience, but this apparently has been put to the test and has uh, passed with flying colors. Uh, not in my, uh, not my particular model here, but... Uh, if you want a Pakal style knife with a ring that you know has, um, you know, will do the trick, this is the one. And uh, so discreetly carried, all these t uh, TKL knives carry so discreetly on the belt. That's about the width of your belt, maybe a little bit wider. And in this case, I have the, the, the um, horizontal um, discreet carry concepts clip. So this makes a great, great carry. It's the kind of thing that you can uh, carry and have a t-shirt draped over it, and it's no problem. No one will notice. It just blends right in. Last up today, uh, my emotional support knife was the Kershaw Iridium. I'm a huge fan of this knife. Uh, this was the one folding uh, knife that I brought with me when I want, went down to Texas. Uh, this is one that I packed that... I would, I knew that I would be more than happy with um, carrying all weekend, but if it got stolen out of my bag, it wouldn't be the end of the world. It's not that expensive. I could replace it. Um, really dig this knife. So it's aluminum D2. It has a really excellent uh, crossbar lock. Uh, you know, I, I would say it rivals the Hogue crossbar lock. It's just... It's just awesome. And uh, it's got a D2 blade coated. That coating, uh, you know, I, I, I've i used it a bit, but not that much. I, did, I'm, I was not expecting so much wear on the coating. Um, but <laughs> to someone like me who doesn't use their knives that much, but would still like to have a weathered looking knife, that's pretty cool. I mean, that's just double walled cardboard. I, I had some cardboard I had to, um, you know, over the past couple of weeks that I've used this for. And um, it does great cutting the cardboard, but uh, as you can see, it wears on the coating pretty, uh, pretty nicely. Uh, I dig this knife a lot. Uh, the Kershaw Iridium, worth every penny. I think I paid like 65 bucks for it. Great for emotional support, great for the fidget, but a really, really good user. And uh, I love the, the blade shape and that big swedge. The handle is very comfortable. I love aluminum, and they do the lock beautifully so this is what i had on me today let me know what you had on you drop it down in the comments below did you have an automatic 
on you. Can you carry automatics in your uh, jurisdiction? If you can, it's probably uh, thanks to the man who designed this, Doug Ritter. Every time you buy uh, a RSK Mark I, whether it's a mini, a full size, an automatic, uh, or the fixed blade, um, you go to knifeworks.com. That's where you buy that knife. And when you do, it puts money in the pocket of Doug Ritter, who will then be able to continue the fight for our knife rights. So, um, you know, you don't feel like uh, spending money, uh, sending money to knife rights. Well, buy one of those knives and you'll have a knife and you'll also be uh, doing similar things like putting money in the pockets that make that happen. Okay, uh, next up, I just want to show off this really cool knife uh, that was given to the channel by Dave of This Old Sword Blade Reviews. And it is the Gentleman Junkie Knife Giveaway Knife for Novambra 2023. It is a really cool one. This is going to be a hard one to not adopt myself. Uh, it is the TS-175, uh, and it is a chunker. It's got a long blade. It's a four-inch blade and then a, like about a five-inch handle here. Um, and you're bracketed in with these big, thick slabs of titanium. Look at, look at how big chunky that lock is and that frame this is you know you could get rid of these big um contour g10 frag scales and have a, a slender uh but totally capable um frame lock here uh if it weren't for all of the milling inside to keep this light so this is a big knife but it's nice and light um i love the militaristic look of it not just the uh, handle which is olive drab and definitely uh, evokes a combat knife, uh, but the blade too with the swedge and the nice uh, big fuller, which yes, you can use it to open it. And the thumb studs, everything about this. Oh, and by the way, what a great sharpening choil slash finger choil. Everything about this uh, is all business. That's D2, that's a Wong design, really great action. You can flip. You can uh, use the fuller or you can use the thumb studs any, any way you want. We call this in the business a mixed fruit pudding. Um, so jump in on this. If you like it, uh, Patreon. Go to the knifejunkie.com slash Patreon. Check us out. Uh, see what tier of support works for you. Of course, if you want to be in on this knife, it's the Gentleman Junkie tier of support. Uh, but uh, if you like these conversations we have on the Knife Junkie, which is really our USP, uh, you might want to join because you'll get, at any level, you'll get interview extras. And uh, uh, to me, that's our coolest offering. But it also is nice that you can get a knife every month. And uh, this month, this one's pretty damn cool. So check it out. Go to the knifejunkie.com slash Patreon. I will repeat that long and complex address uh, before we break here. And that is the knifejunkie.com slash Patreon. Among this week's specials at Knives Ship Free, Bradford's Guardian 3.2 is compact enough to carry all day long and has an ergonomic design that creates a comfortable grip. They are in stock in CPM Magna Cut for an impressive blend of edge holding, toughness, and corrosion resistance. The Beg Knives Filoso Dagger is the perfect balance of form and function. It has a comfortable sculpted handle and has three available finishes on the double ground blade. And Benchmade just released the new 560-03 Freak featuring carbon fiber scales, CPMS, 90V Super Steel, and red thumb studs and standoffs. The handle's sculpted profile gives a great feel to this stylish folder. Get these deals and other great specials from our friends at Knives Ship Free. Just use our affiliate link, thenifejunkie.com slash free. That's thenifejunkie.com slash free. Support the show and get a great new knife at the same time. thenifejunkie.com slash free. You're listening to the Knife Junkie podcast. And now here's the Knife Junkie with the Knife Life News. Artisan slash CJRB has uh, easily become one of my favorite uh, manufacturers, foreign manufacturers, uh, especially with the pyrite. Uh, man, that knife really, really won my heart and also showed me what a great uh, manufacturer they are and how, how dialed in their work is. Well, CJRB has a new one out called the Frack, and I've seen two spellings of it, the one that's up here with the K and one with the CK. Um, but the funny thing about this, the CJRB frack is uh, that if you go by this spelling, it's like uh, Battlestar Galactica. Anyone ever watch 
the reboot of Battlestar Galactica in the early 2000s. Great show. Highly recommend it. Uh, but that's their F word in that universe. It's frack. Uh, so I can't help but think that that uh, a nerd designed this, and uh, I love you for it, man. Uh, so this is a big boy. This is a 4-inch, well, 3.9-inch AR RPM 9 blade, um, or... Uh, and and when you get this uh, in AR RPM nine because it comes in two flavors, um, you can get it in frag or smooth titanium, which is uh, or I'm sorry, smooth or frag steel, which is going to be an ounce heavier than the other. So this four point six ounces for the steel, or you can get it in S ninety V and titanium in just the frag handle, which is going to be three point six ounces. So a full ounce lighter uh, with the titanium but just a cool design and kind of reminiscent of the pyrite kind of reminiscent of the echo uh, i should say in the same universe to me i like it smooth better than uh, with the frag so this might be one that i get in the ar rpm 9 uh, version of it with that uh, steel handle because I always kind of wanted the Echo, which has many of the same characteristics we're seeing here. That one was designed uh, by Ray Laconico, but this one has what I always wanted in the Echo, which is a more acute point, but basically it hits all the other points. Uh, so uh, this is an exciting looking one. It's available right now. Um, I got to start doing my research online, see if any of our trusted voices have gotten this one yet. I'm sure they have by the time you're watching uh, this video. CJRB, lots of exciting stuff from there. I can highly recommend um, their work. What can I say? All right, next up from Zero Tolerance, a brand I used to recommend all the time, but uh, have kind of fallen off in uh, recent years. They've come out with a couple of cool ones. Uh, the, the 0308, uh, probably my favorite of their most recent uh, uh, output, uh, but they finally have a new model. They're not just retreading old models with magnet cut or carbon fiber. They have a new one. It's the 0545. Uh, to me, it's a, it's a swing and a miss, uh, but that's just personally. I love the profile. It's a good looking knife. Uh, would that it were larger than 3.2 inches, uh, but it's a 3.2 inch drop point fully flat ground magna cut blade on ceramic bearings no doubt it it's a it's going to be a great knife uh, but they've got that basket weave carbon fiber that to me is so 2012 it just i don't know hasn't carbon fiber moved on that's the that's the carbon fiber that turned me off from carbon fiber and it's taken me a long time to come back in the fold with your marbled carbon fibers and your fat and your camo carbon fibers but this just is uh, one step forward, two steps back, uh, in my humble opinion. I do like that bronzed hardware. Uh, it's got a full titanium um, lock side and uh, two point uh, two ounces. I mean, just two ounces. It's a lightweight slicer, no doubt a sweet little knife. It's just little little things on this could could make it better. I also think the clip uh, is uh, you know it's kind of your off the shelf. Uh, ZT clip and I think that um, yeah you can see it right there it's it's a totally functional over the top uh, you know it's the sort of clip that if you want people to think you're carrying a Kershaw so you don't get rolled for your ZT it's that kind of a clip but you know what that's not really happening out there in the real world so why not just put a nice sculpted titanium clip on there uh, pocket on the outside. Not sure why people don't just put all the, the pockets on the inside uh, for that uh, relief cutout. But uh, now I'm just getting nitpicky. I'm just glad that Zero Tolerance has come out with a with a, a new model because, as I mentioned before, I'm so enamored with the with the Kershaw Iridium. There's no reason why ZT, you know, the big brother, the 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 uh, the expensive cousin. There's no reason why they can't be doing new releases as exciting as the Iridium. So hopefully this fits the bill for, for ZT fans. Okay, next up, this one I know will fit the bill for uh, Benchmade fans. And even maybe some uh, Ritter RSK Mark I fans. Uh, this is the Kershaw Freak, which to me was always their answer to the Ritter Hogue, once, or the, um, the Ritter Griptilian, once they stopped making the RSK OEM'd for... Um, Doug Ritter, I always thought the Freak was kind of their follow-up because it's got a very similar blade <clears throat> to me. 
but anyway, this is the freak. See, yeah, look. So look at that picture and look at look at that blade. And you're like, yeah, it's just a drop point blade, Bob. It's just a drop point. But to me, it's very similar. Anyway, the Freak is a great knife that a lot of people have loved. Uh, its first iteration had some uh, some rubber impregnation in the handle that turned some people like yours truly off. But uh, they have since done a lot of different uh, th uh, treatments with it. This latest one is exciting if you like S90V, which I never really had much of an opinion on until... Uh, Jack Wolf Knives started uh, shipping with S90V. I really like it. As a matter of fact, I've sharpened it at this point, and I even enjoyed that experience. Uh, but the new Benchmade Freak, 3.6 inches, almost fully, well, very high flat grind uh, or high saber grind of S90V. Um, now, the last, uh, the the normal steel for this is M4, which is a steel that people love i like m4 a lot too uh, so they're replacing one amazing steel with another i guess this is a, a more corrosion resistance uh, but this is the lightest freak ever this freak is the lightest freak ever at 4.12 ounces uh that is a light freak if you ask me uh this is a regular blue class model this is not uh one of your limited edition uh things coming out in a special steel this is uh now just going to be a thing this is uh you want a bench made you can go find that one now regularly and it is available now it's got that uh, arrow clip which i love and uh a little red thumb stud next up clever girl uh from crkt uh an austin mcglown uh, design this was the inaugural or in the inaugural class of the forged by war series uh by crkt these are knives folders and fixed blades designed by combat veterans um, and uh, uh, each each designer each combat vet who designed a knife uh, gets to choose the um, uh, charity that it helps and in in this case it's uh, who does oh the green beret foundation so every time you get a clever girl from crkt uh, some of the proceeds go to the Green Beret Foundation. But uh, this is a very cool knife. I, I've always liked the look of it. They did a folding version of it at some point, but uh, Clever Girl, I, I can only imagine it's named after the Velociraptor in uh, the first uh, Jurassic Park. Remember the Australian guy with the cool bush hat and the Spaz 12 Franchi shotgun? He's like, he's like uh, right before he gets killed by the Velociraptor, he says, Clever Girl. Uh, I think that's how, how it goes, as, as I remember. But if you look at the blade shape, you can see some pretty, uh, some pretty nasty curves. Well, now they came out with a new version of this uh, Persian blade. Uh, that's a 4.6-inch blade, by the way, with VEF serrations. So three of those Tom VEF serrations, those giant scoops, it's like having three little mini karambits on your, on your Persian blade. I think it's cool. I love VEF serrations. I don't have any in the collection uh, but I, I do adore them uh, and their uh, effectiveness. Uh, comes with a Kydex sheath and uh, a, a subtle change to this one, too. You can see in this picture that Jim has up uh, that blue and black swirled G10. Uh, quite, quite fetching uh, to the eye, if you ask me. Um, so those are the changes. It's still an SK5, uh, which is a, a good budget carbon steel. Uh, you see cold steel, use that to great effect. Um, and uh, just with those added serrations, making it extra nasty. Because let's face it, a, a Persian can be a very, uh, um, uh, very effective and nasty knife. But with that curve, as you're, I'm, this is not a Persian, uh, but I'm just going to use the curve here uh, under the... Um, under the cam here uh, as it curves away from the target with that natural arc of your hand and your wrist uh the the blade starts to uh come away from the target but when you have those three little serrations you have three new points each time grabbing and pulling and slicing uh so i i think adding serrations especially to a persian is a great idea uh that's why i got the um that's why i got uh my recent uh persian upswept cold steel in um 
in serrations. Okay, that's it. That's it. That's all I was trying to say. Serrations plus Persian equal effective cutting. Uh, let's get out of here. Uh, Knife Life News for the week. And uh, uh, we'll see you in a second for the state of the collection. The Get Upside app is your way to get cash back on your gas purchases. Get Upside is an app you put on your smartphone, and whenever you need to get gas, search your area for savings, claim your discount, fill up your tank, and then take a picture of the receipt with your phone. And that's it. You've just got cash back. Visit theknifejunkie.com forward slash save on gas to get the app and start saving. Again, that's theknifejunkie.com slash save on gas. And now that we're caught up with Knife Life News, let's hear more of the Knife Junkie podcast. So I wanted to show off this really cool little um, Stockman. It's a medium-sized Stockman. Uh, it's an Uncle Henry. I've had this for a while. I believe I got this in New York. And it hasn't had an edge. It never had an edge. I believe it's pretty old, though. I mean, like from the 80s old, because the Stagalon, that's fake stag, is really high quality. It seems like a really high quality Stagalon, uh, if that is even a thing. Um, I would venture to say that it's not real, but, but it kind of feels real. It, it's got the dark carbon um, steel springs back here and um, very, very nice thin uh, behind the edge blades but they had no edge so i finally uh took this to the to the diamond stones of my sharp maker and put edges on it and it did not take very long and it made me fall in love with the stockman design uh, in this case you have a long turkish clip point blade with the clip starting all the way at the back and uh, this one got very sharp very quickly uh, which leads me to believe it's pretty soft steel, so I'm not going to be hard using it. Uh, but the good thing is you got three blades. You can always keep one of them sharp or use one and then move on to the other. Uh, but the three blades of the Stockman are uh, the, the main blade, which in this case is that clip point. It's got very good action. Uh, you have a sheep's foot blade. Very... Uh, very useful straight edge utility blade, probably the most used on these knives. Um, and the way they nestle in there, like a true stockman, uh, the, the blades are all on angles so that they fit. You'll see some uh, stockmen have um, three different wells for the, for the blades, and that makes them extra wide, like the buck uh, that I have. Or it's got... Uh, yeah, it's, it's got a whole bunch of space in there. It's not trying to make it as thin as possible. And that takes a lot of work, a lot of design work. We talked with Ben Belkin about that, uh, you know, designing multi-bladed uh, slip joints for them to nestle in together like that is uh, pretty difficult. Uh, last blade here, I will do that. Sometimes people, to avoid the inevitable, inevitable blade rub, when they pull out the third blade, which is usually a um, uh, spay blade, they'll open this up first so that they don't rub. But in this case, it's the uh, spay blade. And, and on the end of that dog leg pattern, it gives it a real nice uh, angle to the handle. So you get a real, real good cutting angle on that, uh, on that blade. Uh, very useful with the, with the belly up front and the straight in the back. Um, I'm very, very excited about having this. So I'm going to uh, start carrying this Stockman. I've never been a Stockman carrier except for when I first got my GEC 66, which is a great knife, but I don't carry it that much uh, these days. Before we move on to the new knives and other acquisitions for the collections, I just want to show you another die job. I know last week I showed you this. I dyed my Benny's clip, my Jack Wolf Knives Benny's clip that had a very, very light gray black micarta that just would not take oil, would not take that black color. So I decided to take the bull by the horns and I, I dyed it burgundy. I love that color. I love it next to the gray. And now it's unique. It's, it's mine. Um, there are many others like it, but this one is mine. 
so I did the same thing with my Lake Champlain Barlow from C. Reisner Cutlery. We were just talking about C. Reisner Cutlery before. This big old Barlow, or big new Barlow, I should say, had the same uh, issue. Very nice micarta, but to me, just too gray and would not take on any uh, color, uh, even if I oiled it or, or did other things. So I dyed it in indigo dye, writ dye. I did a very light, um, I put a, a very small amount of dye in the boiling water. It's all very unscientific uh, because if you look at the label, <laughs> the label's pretty unscientific. So you just kind of wing it. If it's cotton, uh, you put some salt in there, and this is canvas, so uh, that helps it take. Uh, these scales, um, both of these knives come off super easy, and uh, the whole process took very, very little time. Now, I've never dyed G10, but I think dyeing micarta is a little bit easier because it's more absorbent. I think the G10 takes longer, and then I also think that when you're done, you're still washing a lot off. With this, it seemed to absorb in pretty well, and uh, the rinse was clear. It wasn't uh, blue, so... Um, very, very happy about that, and uh, this is riding in its new uh, Duties Daggers slip. Very nice, sumptuous leather slip, very good stitching. He does great work. All right, so let's get on to the new knives. So as you know, I went uh, to the Texas Custom Knife Show uh, recently. I, I was only going to get one thing. I got a few more than one, uh, but that's okay. And I've also received some things. Uh, from some people and some companies, and I just have some new stuff that I need to show off that I'm pretty excited about. The first one, though, was one that I was obsessing over for a while. Um, I've wanted this knife uh, for some time, and I finally uh, finally did it because it was out. Of, it went out of stock, and then the desire really built for it, and then it came back into stock, and I I snapped it up. You know, it's that fear of loss. Uh, but anyway, it is the uh, traditional pocket knives exclusive QSP Hedgehog, a beautiful M390 blade, super duper thin, very, very thinly ground, hollow ground blade, uh, straight razor style, uh, but with a nice point that you can get into stuff with right there, um, and in this gorgeous jigged titanium body. It's very slender. Uh, it, it is great. It, it, it's perfect. I love this knife. It's got really excellent walk and talk. And what I one thing I really love about it is that I've wanted to love a cleaver style knife for a long time. You know, uh, like like uh, like the Kaiser um, Sheepdog or the or the Towser K. Those knives. You know, I want to love them. I just this is the first one where it just makes full sense to me. Uh, it's not a modern locking folder. It's a traditional non-locking, smaller, and the, now the whole razor thing really makes sense to me, really works. This is beautiful. I, I haven't gotten around to it. I want to put a little leather fob on there to uh, brand it as my own. I like to do that sometimes. Um, but this is uh, M390, as I mentioned, uh, really great walk and talk. Now, uh, he has a C. Reisner Cutlery Austin uh, Traditional Pocket Knives has uh, an exclusive of this now, and he's got like eight different fat carbons, uh, fat carbon fiber covers you can get for this. Uh, very, very, very tempting, uh, but right now I, I, I shan't, I shan't do that because uh, I got other fish to fry right now, uh, and I already have a hedgehog. But damn, I want another one. It's such a great, great knife. Even looks beautiful closed. And here it is in its slip from Kevin Duty. Beautiful, beautiful slip. Speaking of beauty, dazzling, like incredible beauty. Uh, this is the new Jack Wolf Knives uh, Little Bro. And it is in this unbelievably dazzling Kiranite. That's the word I keep using for it because that's the word for it. To me, I look at it and I see the universe. I see... I see those Hubble telescope images, you know what I mean? Okay, I'm being a little corny, or maybe a lot even, but um, that's what that Kiranite looks like to me. It's just gorgeous, and uh, it feels really good. I don't have any modern Kiranite uh, knives. I know you can get it on 
Uh, you can find it on case knives. You can find it on some other knives. Um, but I don't think I have a modern representation of this thing, uh, of this uh, material before now. So it is very nicely slick, very nicely contoured, but it doesn't feel like it's going to slip out of the hands. Maybe when wet, um, but it, it, it has a surface tension to it um, that, I don't know, just keeps it in the hand. Uh, so the story with the, with the little bro is that um, this was the first version that came out um, over a year ago, and there, was, there were blade wrap issues. So the manufacturing was a little bit faulty on this knife, um, and so uh, he collected them all back and sent them back. Uh, those of us that he sent review copies to, we got to keep them. Uh, I sharpened the, bra the blade wrap out. It's still, it's still there ever so slightly. You can see. Let me see if I can get it there. You can see a little glint right there. It's most, uh, mostly sharpened out. You can see it right there. It doesn't really affect the cutting. Um, and it's M390 blade steel, so it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a slog to sharpen through. So I've been uh, using it and then occasionally sharpening through it. It's almost gone. Uh, to me, it's, it's nothing. It's uh, nothing. But he worked through those problems on this knife. And I, I swear I think I can see it because the blade seems slightly more slender on the new one and i'm wondering if if that's uh, what the solution was to uh, cure that blade wrap blade wrap is when you close a slip joint and the spring um you know fires it back into the channel and uh it it continues on and instead of stopping it dings uh that little rise in the um, liner there that rise in the liner is to accommodate the pin that holds the spring in the back. So uh, when you see a Coke bottle or, or a swell center and, and it kind of pops out like this, like the Vampire Jack, that's where the pin is so you don't have that uh, bump in the channel. Okay, maybe it's more info than you needed, but probably not. Um, this one is going to go fast. Uh, if it's not already gone, I would say jump on the little bro. It's the perfect size. It's right between a GEC 15 and 14. They're classic boy style knives. That's what this is. Classic boy, boy style knife with that sleeve board uh, pattern handle and that gorgeous uh, downward reaching clip point blade for accelerated cutting and a tip. Uh, down, right down where you need it. So this is an awesome, awesome knife. And since it didn't get, uh, didn't really get made and distributed the first time, they're going to go fast because uh, there's there's a lot of extra demand. So I would say jump on this one, just like you may have jumped on a single bladed GEC 15 back in the day. Okay, next up, this sent to me from We Knives. This is this is sweet. Uh, this is the new brazen in button lock. The brazen button lock, such a great knife. So I had the brazen in black blade, maroon handle, and I gave it to my brother. Um, he and I went to the same high school, and that was our our school's colors. Not like we're big rah rah kind of guys, but you know, I think we both look fondly upon those days, and. Uh, whether or not we look fondly upon those days, I definitely look fondly upon those colors, and I know uh, Vic likes them too. So uh, he is now the owner of that. I wish I now had that to compare, but really the difference is the lock. This is uh, got the Civivi button lock. Civivi, Sen Cut, We, uh, killing it with their button lock. Uh, this one has a little bit of stick. Uh, I'm going to put it in front of the microphone. You hear that? There it is, and then listen. You hear a little pop. Uh, I think, well, that was there when I first got it. I've had this for a couple of days now. And then I, I put a little oil in the bearing uh, on the pivot just for fun. And, excuse me, that seemed to make the, the lock stick um, come back a little bit. Uh, I'm not concerned. I had the same thing with my Senkut Watuga, I, another knife I gave away. Uh, but that knife um, had that. It also had the black coating. After a while, the black coating wears in, and A, it becomes smoother on the pivot, but also becomes smoother on the lock release. 
in any case, I don't mind a little lockstick. Uh, like, I shouldn't mind a little lockstick. Of course, it gets to the ADD part of me, but uh, lockstick just means something is locked up even a little bit better. Uh, so shouldn't bother me too much. Uh, 3.6 inch uh, blade. This is... Uh, 14C, that's what I thought. 14C28N, they mark it so small. Uh, but yeah, 14C28N, and uh, which is just a great blade steel. Um, easy to sharpen, keeps a wicked edge. If you like to, a polished edge, it, it polishes up very nicely. And the ergos on this are just really great. They feel This feels nice in hand. It, it's hand filling without being too thick. Also, in reverse grip, which is a definite possibility for a knife like this, uh, it has really great landing for your thumb on the pommel comes in a variety of uh colors and and uh color ways as the kids are fond of saying so check these out i'm going to do a uh, an up close video of this and uh, also the next knife um which we sent me and i practically jumped out of my pants i was so excited uh about this one uh this is the terzuola design tamashi Tamaishii, I think. Ta I th okay, what my understanding, Tamashii, Tamashii. Uh, my understanding is that you pronounce everything in Japanese, which might make it a little easier to pronounce. So Tamashii, Tamashii is what I'm calling it. Uh, a beautiful upswept uh, sort of um, Quaken style knife here, uh, designed by the great and powerful Bob Terzuola and made just so nicely this thing is beautifully done um you've got d2 blade steel and you've got sandwiched construction here so that micarta goes all the way around the handle uh it's a full tang but you don't see it because um it's totally encapsulated in this incredibly comfortable handle that the handle is is so comfortable it's like that pair of boots that almost feels better to have on than not. Uh, this almost feels better to have in hand than not. Uh, just a very, very comfortable contoured handle. Uh, I, it's green, very, very dark green next to that very dark black. It's just incredible looking. You got a nice swedge on the spine there and then a forward bit of jimping. So you have the rear jimping for um, saber grip. And then if you're going on a more Filipino grip here, uh, pushing down on the back with the thumb, you got some right there. This blade is incredible. I love it. I love this knife. And the sheath that comes in is really great too. A, uh, a rather generous um, mounting option here in their version of the tech lock. I think the tech lock is a little much. Uh, I like it for bigger knives, you know, um, like a big outdoors knife, it'd be great to have on. But for something that you want to stash on your person, it's a little too big for me. But I got to say, for the money, uh, it is a generous uh, uh, and very, very versatile offering. Um, one thing that this comes with that... Oh, it's over here. All, all of the Senkut and Civivi fixed blade knives come with these uh, incredibly large lanyards i'm not exactly sure why why <laughs> uh my uh my sen cut uh waxahachi also came with this um and i i don't need that um thanks i don't need it though uh but it's interesting it's a it's a big length of paracord that uh, gutted paracord that you could un undo and use i guess um in a pinch so so there is that uh, there is some utility to it but um i i, I find it a little much especially for such a sleek and beautiful knife. I mean, this knife is just, you know, objectively beautiful, in, in my opinion. So a very nice knife. Thank you, uh, Civivi. We send cut for sending these to me. I cannot wait to do the review and show this, uh, show you my appreciation because, uh, yeah, it could be awkward if you sent me something that was really awful that I hated and then I had to, like, give it away and and hedge my words. In this case, I won't have to. Uh, they did send in a package of these, which I think 
are they're having a big i think they're having a big sale and and the reason i say i think is because i've noticed other people mention it but that that was not part of why they sent this stuff to me but i i do believe they're having a sale um but this they sent me two of these things and they are awesome they're little uh knife rolls so one two three four five you can fit ten knives in here of varying widths um so very nice little thing and uh you roll this up throw it in your uh throw it in your pack in the in the in your check on luggage and boom you can take a whole collection with you all right next up these were sent to me by off grid and they're very exciting to me and ordinarily i don't get excited about assisted open knives but um the off grid uh rapid fire is one uh along with the the zero tolerance 350 and the zero tolerance 566 these are uh assisted openers that excite me uh the rapid fire is an a model that first came out with a recurve and then came out with a warncliffe i keep the warncliffe rescue model in my car and now they have taken the rapid fire chassis and added the stinger blade that dagger blade that was very big that came out a couple years uh about a year ago and then the Viper in the V2 blade style. And man, these are awesome. Uh, he sent me four of these. I'm gonna give, we're gonna do a giveaway of uh, two of them. And uh, this, they both come in all black and they both come in this coyote, um, coyote coloration. Uh, the blade stock on both of these is wicked thin. So if you look at this compared to the Viper and this compared to the Stinger, uh, the blade stock here on the rapid fires are much thinner, but the blades themselves are broader. So these are gonna be even better slicers than both of those two. And I gotta say, I'm always going off about how off-grid knives are great cardboard slicers. Even their most oblique grinds which they don't really get very oblique but even their most saber of saber grinds slip through cardboard like it's not even there they're they're incredible uh slicers so you add a broadness to these blades that are already pretty amazingly capable and then a thinness and uh they're they're pretty stellar um i also happen to think they look great and they come out with such authority that it feels they feel like automatics they they really have that that chunky automatic feel they feel like real real hard use knives and they are and that's why i have the orange one with the glass breaker and the warren cliff blade and the serrations in my car okay something that they have uh really improved on this version is the rise on the pocket clip the rise on the pocket clip on the former um, or the uh, earlier iterations of the rapid fire uh, comes up too high and you just feel it in the palm of your hand when you grip this one they knocked it down it still it still goes in and out of the pocket super easily but they knocked it down so when it's in hand you don't feel it and it's one of the most comfortable handles ever because it's thick it's contoured and it's got the uh, elongated hexagonal scooping uh, that just grips your hand so these things are awesome uh, i'm really excited about these and um, they do make great car knives uh, the only reason i hesitate is because uh well i've i've had cars uh knives stolen out of my car and i would hate to have my off-grid uh, rapid fire stolen but in any case uh, a great knife to get you out of a pinch no doubt Okay, next up, this one I got for my wife. This is not officially mine. It's officially my wife's. And, uh, well, it's going to have to stay that way, but it doesn't mean I can't borrow it. Okay, so this is a custom knife from knife maker Neil Warren of Maximus Knives. Maximus Knives. I got this Mamba from him at the Texas Custom Knife Show. He had a number of them in different handle uh, materials, but... This one really struck me. It's a blue rich light. Rich light is like a paper micarta and uh, very nice sheath. And then look at that blade. Super cool blade. I love the shape of this thing. Uh, you get a lot of different, um, 
you get a you get a point that rides in the center so it's easy to use for utility cuts but you also have a belly a bit of a straight you got a very stout tip there and a place to put your thumb uh it's just great and it fits my wife's hand perfectly uh this fits my hand really well too um i think if you have big giant sausage hands this is more of a three and a half finger knife for you um but this guy, Neil Warren, uh, had uh, this guy, this knife maker, Neil Warren of Maximus Knives, had some incredible kitchen knives out. Uh, I'm going to have him on the show. Uh, he has agreed he's going to come on. Um, but he's been doing these kitchen knives with uh, copper core, you know, all that, that copper swirl and just incredible grinds. And uh, uh, his he was an interesting guy making fascinating knives and uh I really fell in love with this little Mac, uh, with this little mamba, and um, well, I told my wife I would get her something. So, <laughs> hey, there you go. And she really likes this. She took took this recently on her trip to New York with her, and uh, said it it brought confidence. So, boom, there you go. And she knows how to use it if she has to. Heaven forbid. All right, let's put this back. Very nice. Uh, a snap in the sheet there too next one this one i got from me and um i was carrying this all weekend while i was up there at the texas custom knife show uh it was riding actually right next to my nova one uh and that is this beautiful little little mini skinner or, or scalper i should say mini scalper from 310 forge mike cahill very interesting guy i was totally brought into his um display from his beautiful bowies. He forges incredible bowies. He's, he's got some, one that looked just like the very first one uh, that they say James Black made for Jim Bowie and then a bunch of other kinds of musos and other kinds. And, and then he had uh, some EDC, some Skinner type knives and, and scalper knives. And this just really grabbed me. First of all, I love the sheath. Of course it rides horizontally. I carry it uh, in the front like this so I can grab it reverse grip and then manipulate the knife how I want but it's it's a very thin 16th of an inch uh, um, 1095 blade steel with um, African pack 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 wood and there's his maker's mark you can see it right there Cahill a uh, very interesting guy he's also uh, he's a young man but a preacher and um, we talked uh, he's a Southern Baptist preacher of some ilk. I'm sorry for, for my ignorance, um, but very interesting talking to him um, about uh, how that fits into his life and his forging. I saw a bit of that in, in Texas, which I, I found pretty cool. People putting their, putting their all into their work. And if their all includes uh, spiritual life, it's cool to see. Um, this handle fits so nicely in hand. Uh, it's not even a full... A four finger grip, but the bulbous nature of it makes it really comfortable. This reminds me of a roach belly, that knife that uh, Cold Steel makes very, very cheaply. It's a great little knife, uh, but it has a similar sort of scalping um, blade style. Uh, this one, when I bought it from him, he put a razor edge on it. it was also it was already very sharp, but he. He uh, put a wicked edge on it, uh, just ran it over a stone a few times. And uh, I have been loving this little knife. Check him out, uh, 310 Forge, especially if you like buoys and, uh, and other traditional American knives, uh, especially those that lean towards the weapon in the belt. Uh, it's, he does some really cool stuff. All right, next up, this one I've wanted ever since I saw it first announced. Uh, but it was limited and expensive, and it just didn't happen until now. Uh, and this is the Markita, the Doug Markita Cortada, made by Fox Knives and distributed. I think this project was spearheaded by RussianBlades.com. Uh, leather sheath, uh, dangler sheath, but also with a, uh, with a belt loop here. But you didn't come for the sheath. You came for the knife. So this beauty is 
incredible. It feels so good to wield. It feels so good to uh, do Kali drills with. And even if you don't uh, know the drills and you just pick this up, it's going to feel so good in hand. Uh, let's start Let's start with the blade. <laughs> a long, straight, pointy, downward angled blade, very evocative of the Gununting, the famous sickle-shaped sword used by the Special Marines in the Southern Philippines, and, uh, and the main blade of Pekiti Tershakali. Uh, it's wicked, wicked blade style that uh, usually has a sharpened swedge, uh, four to six inches on the back, also sharpened. Uh, in this case, the swedge is not sharpened, but uh, could be if you were endeavoring enough. Uh, probably N690CO blade steel. It's not marked anywhere, but it's from Fox Knives, Italy. So we can expect that it's N690. Um, this is not for slicing cheese. This is for, uh, you know, uh, human targets. And, oh, and not just for human targets. Uh, you could use this as a machete too, um, or as a bush knife. It's real thick behind the edge, uh, but wickedly sharp. So a, a robust grind, no doubt. Uh, back here you have uh, this scoop of jimping, a swale of jimping that really to the, to the naked thumb is very uncomfortable. It's pretty sharp. Uh, with gloves, it would be useful, but really I feel no need for that jimping. I think that that is there. As a matter of fact, I know that that is there for trapping. This is more for if you're using this uh, in a combative sense and you are trapping the arm of, of your opponent, either between your arm and the blade like this in a classic reverse grip uh, sort of trapping style, or uh, whether you're pulling back on someone's arm for a momentary uh, control point. Uh, that's what that's there for. It's there for control. And uh, he makes a small, or they made a smaller version of this too, which I'd love to have in a four inch blade that has that there. And, and to me on that, it would make more sense uh, as jimping as well. Let's look at this handle. This handle looks like a, um, basically like a Jason Knight Kukri handle. Uh, it is really, really comfortable. You have this horse hoof pommel here with the flare and the extension here. So the your palm nestle, nestles in there on a chop and can rebound. And then you have the bird's beak right here, uh, keeping that from leaving your hand uh, when, when uh, centrifugal force is pulling at it. Uh, in the handle, some cool uh, meaning here. This is taken from Doug Markaita's tattoo on his arm. And uh, I believe it's oriented this way. And so he is from the Philippines, born and raised. And so this is his island nation. Uh, he is of the warrior class. Those are the spearheads that circumnavigate his arm. And then here, it's a bunch of circles. Uh, the female female and male, I'm sorry, these are triangles. The female and male triangle representing the females and males of his family. And here you see three lines in the male triangle uh, for his sons, or two lines, I guess, for his sons. And uh, so ver a lot of meaning here in this uh, wooden handle, which I think is cool. Also, incidentally, female and male footwork, uh, uh, female and male triangle footwork is, uh, is how uh, things are mapped out in Filipino Kali. Uh, so I think that's kind of cool. All right. Putting this away, what a, what a, I'm so happy to have this in my, in my collection, as I am happy to have this in my collection. This is uh, the Bravehawk Forge Francesca Tomahawk. Uh, I really like this one. This, this one is uh, at the Bravehawk Forge. This is their favorite. Uh, it is a, a Franciscan style Tomahawk. So it's got this curve here. And uh, I, I heard a lot of people, incidentally, uh, friends of Jacob Sewell's, Jake uh, of Bravehawk Forge, um, was a is one of the co-organizers of the Texas Custom Knife Show. And uh, I heard a lot of his buddies busting on him for this one. They don't like the curve for some reason. I like the curve. Uh, I think it's cool. And, uh, you know, it's uh, evocative of a woman's body, Francesca, let's say. Uh, you've got a really nicely shaped, um, teardrop-shaped uh, handle here in cross-section. It comes to a, a ridge right here. So you always know which way the the blade is oriented if you can't tell from the weight. These are definitely made for and optimized for throwing. 
Um, so uh, it has a tapered haft. And uh, there was a, uh, a axe throwing, tomahawk throwing uh, display there the whole time. And people were using these and other Bravehawk forged tomahawks for throwing. And they are awesome throwers. Uh, one thing, I did order two small versions of this. Um, they're about three-quarter size uh, that he makes for kids. And so I ordered one for both my daughters for Christmas because every girl wants a tomahawk for Christmas. Um, and if they don't, well, by gum, they will have one anyway. Uh, they, they will have more tomahawks and knives than their boyfriends. And that is my goal. Uh, this knife, I mean, this tomahawk here uh, is really commemorative of um, Jake's episode 440. He was on episode 440. So if you want to see about tomahawks and brave hawk forge just go to the knife junkie.com slash 440 and check that out but uh, i will not be throwing this uh no doubt it, it it can really handle it it's it's a milder steel back here and a high carbon steel up here all forged together and uh i could always replace the haft but it has sentimental meaning so i'm not going to be throwing this knife or this uh, tomahawk anytime soon all right. Well, that's it. These are the recent uh, acquisitions uh, that have come come through here that I wanted to show off. A uh, few of these will be getting close up, uh, close ups. I released a video on these already, so you can check check these out. My thoughts and comparisons. Love these knives. And then uh, I will be releasing we and a couple of these others over the next coming week. Okay. Be sure to join us on Sunday for a great interview show and. Uh, as always, uh, in November, we give away a knife, and uh, we give away a knife every month. Uh, if you are a member of Patreon, uh, you could be a part of that. This month, it is this really cool Tucson TS-175. Just uh, scan that QR code and find out how you could get this one. All right, for Jim working his magic behind the switcher, I'm Bob DeMarco saying, until next time, people, please, don't take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, theknifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on theknifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at theknifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at the knifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487 and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Knife Junkie.